welcome to the Oaklands YouTube channel. In today's sewing tutorial, we're going to be making an adorable little crossbody, an adorable beginner friendly little crossbody. Today, we are making the Pixie crossbody from Spencer Og. This little cutie patootie is a smaller compact size and I'll show it to you on in just a moment. It has a small little pocket up front which can be a mesh pocket or it can be a fabric pocket. So this is right here and then you have another slip pocket right here. You have a nice wrap around zipper going around the entire top of the bag. On the back we have another zipper panel. This is a very easy, easy zipper to make. Okay guys, this is not a difficult zipper pocket right here. I'll, I'll walk you through it. Inside the bag we have one slip pocket and then we have a crossbody strap. This looks more challenging than it is. I don't know about you, but when I looked at this originally, I was like, all right, those are some really tight curves, right? Those are some tight curves. No curves. These are corners. There's no curves. This is essentially a really cool and different and unique boxy bag. It's really what it is. So if you hate the curves and you hate the binding, you're gonna love this bag. If you love, if you've made my boxy bag or even the itty bitty boxy bags, you're gonna be fine on this bag. This is a fantastic bag. We don't have any weird curves with our zipper or anything like that. So on this version, I used a cotton woven for the front and a little mesh pocket right here. And then this light blue material, that's just waterproof canvas. Now, a lot of times we use waterproof canvas on the lining of our bags. I want you to remember, it is a fantastic exterior fabric as well. Waterproof canvas is very inexpensive, it's extremely durable, and you don't have to interface it with anything. It has a nice stiffness to it, but you can still sew it on a domestic sewing machine. So if you're starting out and you're trying to get into vinyl and cork, but you're a little worried about the thickness of it and the stickiness of it, try waterproof canvas first, where you would normally use vinyl. I do that all the time. I use waterproof canvas on the exterior of my bags loads of times. It always looks amazing. People always kind of assume it is vinyl when they see it and it's going to take a beating really well and be easy to clean. I just, I cannot recommend waterproof canvas for the exterior enough. I also use waterproof canvas for the strap of this bag as well. Okay, so we don't have any sort of recessed zippers or anything like that. This back zipper is not, it's very easy. It's actually just attached over the exterior. You can see down here, that's the exterior of the fabric. I'm going to show you what this bag looks like on. Okay, so as you can see, it has a really slim fit. It's perfect for an everyday bag. Your cell phone, your notebook, your sanitizer here, cell phone here, wallet inside, everything you need. Go really quickly. Great for travel. Here it is on the side. I love this bag too, especially for the idea of traveling because you know when you're getting on an airplane and you've got your big bag and you're like whacking people in the head while you're going down the aisle. Yeah, I know. We've all done it. We've all had it done to us. This bag is not going to do that. This is just going to have the bare essentials in it. So for me, like if I were traveling, I would travel with this going across my body with my wallet, passport, basics, you know, cell phone, things like that. And then if I had extra stuff, I would have a backpack. And that's how I would travel. So in today's tutorial, we're going to try making this with some vinyl. We're also going to switch up the top zipper just a little bit. We're going to do a double zip here instead of a single zip. Totally optional. Not a big adjustment whatsoever. I am going to keep doing the mesh pocket because I know a lot of you guys have questions about mesh pockets, so I want to show you how easy of an addition that is to this bag. Thank you so much to Spencer Og for allowing me to film today's tutorial. Thank you also for gifting me this pattern. I absolutely love it. I've seen so many of you already make this. I mentioned this bag on social media and I had a number of you reach out and tell me you've already made it and it's been your everyday bag for quite a while now. So that's fantastic to hear. Make sure you go check out the Spencer Og website. I'll have a link for this pattern down in the description. She has so many variations of this bag. This bag is so popular. So, so popular. I cannot wait to hear what you think of it. So if you're new to the Oakler's YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down. Down in the comment section of timestamps for every single part of this video. If you just click the little arrow over here in the bottom right of your screen, you'll have links for each one of the timestamps as well as links for all of the material I'm using in today's tutorial. All right, let's get started. All right, to get started, you're going to need a half a yard of exterior fabric. Now, this is my exterior fabric. I'm using vinyl and a little bit of quilt cotton, which is just a cotton woven material. 
Now, you're gonna need total a half a yard. So if you're using different things, you can just use you know one big piece of vinyl and then a couple smaller pieces of your cool cotton, or you can use all the same fabric, which really looks cool too. From your lining, you're also gonna need a half a yard of material. Now, this time I am using this quilting cotton. And then if you wanna do that optional mesh pocket, you just need a small cut of that. So I have this by Annie mesh for my mesh pocket. The only interfacing I'm using today is my Pellon Shape Flex. You're going to need about a yard of this. I would have a yard just to be safe. Here's some of the other material we'll be using today. You're gonna need a 16 inch long zipper. I'm actually gonna do two zipper pulls on this. I think that that's gonna work really well with the shape of the bag. This one is a number five zipper. You're gonna also want a nine inch zipper for that back pocket. I'm just using one of these pre-cut zippers, but I will trim it down. You're gonna need nine inch zipper for that one. For the crossbody strap, you need two D-rings. These are three quarter inch D-rings a three quarter inch slider, and two three quarter inch swivel hooks. And then I have some double fold elastic here for my mesh pocket. If you're not doing the mesh pocket, you don't need this elastic. All right, here's the other stuff. For my top thread, I'm using this awesome new thread I just got. This is from Wizardry Stitchery. It is a variegated thread. It's called the Fairy Floss. It is a Tex weight 45. Now it is pretty thick, but it should work on most domestic machines. It works on mine just fine. For the bobbin thread, I have a Mara 100 weight. My needle today is a Microtex 8012. If I feel like some of the material is a little too bulky, I might bump it up to a Microtex 9014. I have my little bag tag here, and I have a link down in the description for how I got these made if you're interested. My marking tools today are a Soline air erasing marker and then this friction heat erasing pen. I would not use this on anything that's going to be seen in the end. This can only be used in seams and on the back of pieces. I also have my trusty little seam ripper and stiletto, a scrap piece of fusible fleece. This is just for the bag tag. You could also use a scrap piece of vinyl or any sort of thicker material. I have my double-sided tape. This is my quarter inch double-sided Dritz wash away tape. This is great for zipper installation. A small pair of snips for my thread and then a larger pair of scissors for my fabric. Okay, now let's go through our pattern pieces. Your first pattern piece is A. Now this is like the main body of the exterior. So I'm gonna try vinyl today. On my first bag, I used waterproof canvas, which worked great. So if you're a newer maker and you wanna use something a little bit sturdier, a little bit beefier, but you're a little nervous about vinyl, try waterproof canvas. It's gonna be fantastic for this part of the pattern. As you can see, you're going to cut this pattern on the fold. So when I'm tracing this out on my vinyl, I just trace out one side, mark a couple lines on the back of my vinyl, flip it over, and then trace out the other side. Your B pattern piece is going to be for your lining, and you're gonna have two cuts. So this is not on the fold, this is two separate cuts. These are quilt cotton, and they're both interfaced with my woven Pellon Shape Flex. Pattern pieces C, D, E, and F are all contrast pieces. So if you're using the same material as your exterior, then this will be the same as that vinyl and pattern piece A. But if you wanna add a little bit of contrast, you're gonna use a different fabric for this. I am using quilt cotton for this, and all of my quilt cotton pieces are interfaced with the shape flex. And you can see you're just gonna need one from each of these pattern pieces. When you're tracing these out, make sure you trace them out so that the right side is the ended shape. So if you like to trace it on the back, take your pattern piece and lay it right side down and trace it that way. Orientation is important here, so make sure you pay attention to that. Pattern piece G is going to be your mesh pocket, or if you're using fabric, it's going to be a fabric pocket. This is on the exterior of the bag. Pattern pieces H and J are both lining pockets. So these are both quilt cotton with Shape Flex interfaced already on them. And last are our pieces that don't have pattern pieces. This is our crossbody strap. Since I'm using vinyl, mine is a little bit skinnier because I'm only gonna fold it in half once and leave the raw edges. And then you're gonna have your D-ring strap tab cut as well. So let's start with the lining slip pocket. Take your pattern piece J and lay it right side up and then fold it in half, right sides together so the short edges match. Grab your clips and just clip along this edge. And now let's go to the sewing machine and sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that sewn, let's just flip this right side out. And now we wanna press this seam nice and flat. And I find this easiest to do if I just kinda of put the seam in the middle right here and then finger press one edge and I'll press that one side flat. So now how you, you see how my seam is like this. And then I can flip the other side down 
and get a really nice crisp seam right where I sewed. This might not be a challenging step for you, but it can be for me. So now press the whole unit nice and flat so you have your fold at the top and the bottom. And now the seam edge is going to be on the bottom in this top clean fold right here. That's going to be the top of your pocket. So now let's top stitch along the single fold at the top at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so now grab one of your lining panel B's and she likes to classify these smaller nubs up top that stick out as the arms and these longer appendages down here as the legs. So these are the arms, these are the legs. So you're gonna rotate this so the arms are up top and the legs are on the bottom. Measure down two and three quarters of an inch from the top edge where your little arms are and then using a ruler to do that line up your pocket so it's nice and straight. So the top of your pocket should be two and three quarters of an inch from the top of your lining and now we can just clip along the sides here to hold it in place. Okay, so now we're gonna baste along the sides and top stitch along the bottom to really secure this pocket in place. All right, there you go, there's your little slip pocket. She does give you a suggestion here if you wanna kinda of divide this into thirds, so you have a little pen pocket and a bigger pocket. It's really, really cute, I love this. I'm just gonna leave it as one big pocket because I got a lot of junk to put in my bag. <laughs> All right, you can go ahead and put this to the side. So now we're gonna work on our mesh pocket. So I have my little mesh piece here and my little five inch piece of elastic here. And what we wanna do first is baste our mesh onto our elastic. Now you can see the elastic is on at a diagonal. So you can take this to the sewing machine and just stitch right along the middle here. You can see with double fold elastic, there's a little line that runs down the middle, which makes it very easy to fold this in half. And what we wanna do is kind of tuck our mesh in so that the top diagonal edge here is going to just snug in to that double fold area, base this down, and then we can flip this down and sew it down. So I'm just gonna quickly base this down at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And when we're basting this down, you're gonna wanna use a zigzag stitch or a stretch stitch. So any sort of stitch that has a zigzag in it, a little back and forth. A straight stitch is not going to allow this to stretch. So you see we have a stretchy elastic, we have a stretchy mesh. The point of all this is that this pocket will stretch. And if you use a straight stitch, it won't. So if you use a zigzag stitch, it will. If your machine doesn't have a zigzag stitch, you can definitely still do this with a straight stitch. Just know that this won't stretch a lot or you can try the fabric option. All right, there we go. So you see now when I stretch it, the whole thing still stretches. So I did a basting stitch. Now I'm just gonna fold down this elastic so that it covers that entire top edge of my mesh. And I am no expert when it comes to these zigzag stitches. You guys know I, I usually just do straight stitches. So these might be on the bigger side, that's okay, I think it looks cute. And I am using a very light colored thread in my bobbin so you can't even see it on the back. So now we're gonna go back to the sewing machine with this folded over and just stitch this fold over elastic in place. All right, there we go. I think that looks pretty cute. Yeah, I like that. Look how cute that little pocket is. It's a little stretched out, but it's okay, it'll be fine. So now grab your E unit and laying right side up, take your mesh pocket right side up and just line it up with the sides and the bottom and clip in place. All right, now let's base down the sides and the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So if you have elastic overhang, go ahead and trim that down. Isn't that a fun little pocket? I love that. It's so simple too. It's You can add this to really any bag pattern. I mean, if you just have panels in a bag, you can stick a mesh pocket in between them and now you have an exterior pocket that's pretty simple. So now grab your D unit and we're gonna line this up on the left side. So it should be the exact same height as the left side of your center E unit. And then we're gonna fold these right sides together and you should see this little notch up here. It locks in with the top corner of your D pattern piece. Now let's clip along this edge here. So now let's go sew along this left edge here at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have that stitched in place, grab your F unit and you're gonna line it up on the right side of that center E unit. And again, it has a little notch, so these top corners should match up. Fold them right sides together, line them up along that edge. And then you can use some clips to hold them together. And now let's sew along this right edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. 
All right, once you have these sewn together, we can just kind of trim down these corners in our seam allowance. I'll do it on the bottom too, why not? Now you can take your unit and then press the seam behind the outer side panels. So I'm just gonna finger press this first and then I'll use my iron to iron this down. Do this for both of the side panels. So the seams are pressed away from the inside, away from the middle. Now we can take this to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch along the sides. So along these seams on the exterior sides, not the middle. We're gonna top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, she mentions that if you have a metal bag tag, this is a good spot to add it. So I went ahead and marked the midpoint along this top slanted edge. And then I measured down one and a half inches. And I'm gonna just center the washer for my bag tag right around there. And I'll just mark the slits for my little bag tag here. I'm gonna grab my seam ripper and just rip very gently along those slits. Remember with any sort of attachment that has prongs, it's always better for the slits that you cut to be a little bit smaller than they need to be rather than bigger. If they're bigger than they need to be, this kind of wobbles around. So I'm just gonna insert this in through those slits like that. And now since I'm using quilt cotton, I really need to beef this up a little bit more. So I'm going to grab a piece of fusible fleece and then just cut those same slits in my fusible fleece. And then I'll add that fusible fleece scrap over the prongs and then I'll add my washer and then fold down my prongs. There we go. All right, and I'm gonna grab one more piece of fusible fleece and a little bit of my Beacon 3-in-1 glue because it's my favorite thing to have when making bags. Just glue everything. I'm gonna add some glue to the back of that fusible fleece and then just cover the back of my prongs with the fusible fleece. That way these little prongs don't rub against the lining and create a hole. And there we go, isn't that cute? Just a nice little, nice little bling, I love that. So now keep this little pocket unit you just made right side up and grab your H pattern piece, which is a lining piece. And we're going to lay this right side down. So you see the importance of making sure you cut everything out right? This is all directional. So we're gonna lay this right sides together. And we wanna line up all four edges, but specifically the top and the bottom edges. So I'm gonna start with the bottom edge and I'll just clip along that bottom. And then I will clip along the top edge as well. And now we're gonna stitch along the top and bottom edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, now let's clip these corners just at a 45 degree angle. And then you can flip this right side out. And now just like I did before on a pocket, I'm going to kind of press these seams down one at a time because I find it can be a little tricky to get this really flat. So I just press one side down and then I'll press the other side down to get a nice straight edge up here. Go ahead and press down this bottom edge as well. Okay, now grab your A unit, which is that big outer body unit. And again, this is the little arms or the top. So lay it so that the little arms are up top. I mean, you really can't have the feet on the top because it's, you know. So now we're gonna take our little pocket and we're gonna line it up with the bottom edge here, right where the little leg appendages come out. So just like this, it's like at the bottom of this T, right? Just line it up perfectly, just like that. And then clip this in place. Okay, now let's baste along the sides and top stitch along the bottom to hold this nicely on the exterior of the bag. cute little pockets. You've got a one pocket and then you got a little pocket. That's adorable. All right, set this to the side for just a moment. Next, grab pattern piece C, which is your outer zip pocket, and we're gonna lay it right side up, and the short edge is going to be the top. Then grab your zipper, and when the zipper pull is closed, it should be going towards the right, and we're gonna lay our zipper right side down. You can see my zipper is much bigger than it needs to be. That's fine for now. We're gonna clip this in place. Now let's take the bottom edge of that pocket and fold it right side up. So we're folding the pocket right sides together and we're just going to line it up with the top edge and include it in our clips. 
If you feel like you need to base down the other edge first, you can do that, but you shouldn't have to. Now we're gonna stitch along this top clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. So now you can flip this right side out and then pull down your zipper pocket and just press right along this edge by the zipper. You can also press along the bottom as well to have a nice little rectangle. Once you have that pressed in place, you can top stitch along the bottom of the zipper right along the top of the pocket at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Sorry, I forgot to film that step, but all I did was top stitch along the top of the pocket on the bottom of the zipper. So now set this to the side for just a moment. Grab your pattern piece A and rotate it so that the pocket that you already attached is on the bottom and the blank space is up here on the top. Now you're gonna measure two and a half inches down from this top edge, and if you are using fabric that allows it, you can make a chalk line right here, just a straight line. You really wanna know exactly where to line up your pocket. Since I'm using vinyl and the chalk doesn't show up that well, I just used my marker and I just made little dashes right in the seam allowance on the side. So I measured two and a half inches down and made my little dashes. Now you're gonna grab your pocket and you're going to lay it right side down and it's gonna be overhanging the top edge here. And you're gonna line up the bottom of your zipper that doesn't have anything attached to it on that chalk line or your little marks that you made that are two and a half inches down from the top. Now I am gonna use a couple pins here to hold this in place. Okay, now I'm gonna sew along this zipper tape at a quarter inch seam allowance, which is gonna bring me pretty close to the zipper coils right here in the middle. And then I'm gonna sew again at an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to hold down this bottom edge. So I'm gonna have two stitch lines just to really secure the zipper in place. All right, once you have that stitch down, now we're gonna fold this pocket down. So tug it down and do your best to get it as straight as possible. All right, now we wanna stitch along the sides and the bottom. I'm going to be doing that at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, and I'm just gonna use a top stitch length around all three sides to hold this pocket down. You might have noticed I almost forgot to move my zipper into the center here, so don't forget to do that. But isn't this a fun way to install a little exterior zipper? I think that's so cute. All right, now you can trim this down. And now at this point in the pattern, she suggests you take a tea break. So I think I actually am going to take a quick snack break and then we'll come back and finish up this adorable bag. All right, so now we're going to attach the main zipper. And this is really cool because you kind of look at this pattern and see it as like a rounded shape, but really what it is is a boxed bag. It's a, it's a boxed bag, it's a boxy bag. And we've made a ton of those on the channel. That's really all it is. So this is cool, you'll like this. So the first thing I wanna do is find the top midpoint of my top edge here. And my top edge is going to have the slip pocket, not the zipper pocket. So I'm just going to fold this in half. And I'll just use scissor, scissors. I forgot to top stitch this, dying it. Totally forgot to top stitch that edge right there. I think I can do that real quick. So I don't recommend top stitching your top pocket like I just did, but because I forgot and it was already stitched down, I was able to just kind of pull the back panel out of the way and top stitch. If I needed to, I could even unpick this a little bit. Since it's just basted in place, nothing, nothing real major has happened yet and all this is still gonna be in the seam, it's okay, it's okay. So I'm marking the midpoint on my top edge of my bag on the side with the slip pocket. And then I'm also gonna mark the midpoint on my zipper tape. Now, our zipper tape is longer than it needs to be. So, it's not a huge deal if you don't have the exact midpoint marked. But I find it's just easier in construction to have midpoints marked. There we go. So again, with my outer panel, slip pocket right side up on the top, I'm gonna take my zipper and lay it right side down and match up midpoint marks. Just use some clips to hold it all together. Now, if you're more comfortable, you can definitely take your zipper pulls and move them out of the way. Just do your best not to let them fly off the edge. It happens to all of us, but it's never fun. There we go. So since I have two, I have to be very careful, but I can get them off there. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna sew along this top edge that we just clipped at a quarter inch seam allowance. We're not basting this, this is your stitching. So quarter inch seam allowance along the entire top edge here. So once you have your zipper attached, grab your B unit that does not have the pocket and we're gonna lay it right side down with the little arms, hey, up top and little footsies down here on the bottom. And we're gonna line this up with that top edge that we just stitched and it should line up perfectly with your outer panel. Okay, once you have it clipped in place, flip this over so you're looking at the back of your exterior panel and hopefully you can see your stitching. 
and then use a ruler and mark in from each of the short edges one inch and mark a line in your seam allowance. So we're going to be stitching between these marked lines. This means we're not stitching the lining panel completely to this edge. We're only stitching the middle of it and we're gonna leave the ends of the lining panel unstitched. You'll see why in just a minute. So let's now stitch along this edge and you're just gonna be going right over your previous stitches. So just get your needle down and just trace those stitches only between the midpoint marks and you should back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so now what we wanna do is top stitch the exterior but not the lining. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my double-sided tape and I'm going to add some double-sided tape to the top edge of my lining in that seam allowance. So see, I'm staying between the edge and the stitches that I just made. And I'm gonna go along the entire top edge of my lining. Okay, now I'm gonna take the paper off my tape and I'm going to fold down the lining panel, wrong sides together. You could also press this with an iron if that will work for you. I found the tape really helped keep it out of the way so I didn't have to worry about it at all. Just get that entire seam pressed down. There we go, now it's out of the way. So now what we wanna do is pull this all back so that the zipper tape goes underneath the exterior fabric, but the lining does not. So if I flip this over, you can see this is what I have. It's like my seams are open. My zipper seam is going behind my vinyl, but my lining seam is staying to the lining. You see? So you might have to press this with your iron. You might have to just finger press this really well. I find that I kind of have to manipulate it a lot at the sewing machine. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to top stitch along the exterior fabric here, keeping the lining out of it. So I'm just top stitching through the exterior, which is folded over, and then the zipper tape and the lining is staying out of all of my stitching. All right, there we go. Once you have that top stitch, let's just flip this so that the exterior is wrong side up, the lining is right side up, and let's press this lining down just like this. And I'm going to add some clips to just hold it in place. It should all line up pretty nicely with your exterior. If it's not perfect, don't worry about it. You're fine. I'm just adding clips to kind of keep everything together so I don't get confused in the next step. So now let's flip this right side up so that our zipper pocket is on the top now. And you're gonna take your bottom edge with the zipper and fold it so the exteriors are right sides together. Now you might find it easiest if you mark a midpoint along this other top edge as well. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That way I can take the midpoint mark on my unsewn part of my zipper tape and just line it up with the midpoint on the other top edge of my bag, clip those together, and then clip the zipper to this top edge of the other side of the bag. Okay, now let's sew along this entire length of the zipper tape at a quarter inch seam allowance. Okie dokie, once you have that attached, grab your remaining lining panel with the pocket and lay it right side down again. The little arms are up top. And we're going to just clip this along that edge we just sewed. Make sure you're lining up the length of it exactly. Okay, now flip this over so you're looking at the back of your exterior panel. Once again, measure in from the short edges here, one inch, and mark a little line in the seam allowance. And now we're just going to trace the stitching on the back of our exterior panel between these marks, making sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Remember, you don't wanna go all the way off the edge with your lining. We're attaching the lining, but we're only attaching the lining between these marked lines. All right, now just like we did before, I'm going to tape down the seam on the lining right by the zipper. So I'm gonna grab my wash away double-sided tape, and I'm just going to attach it along the very raw edge in between the stitching and the edge of the fabric, which it should fit in there perfectly if you did a quarter inch seam allowance. And I can just remove the tape and fold down my lining fabric. 
because we don't want that included in our top stitching. All right, now this part's a little bit trickier because now you see we have like a, like a tube, right? So it's going to be easiest if you open up your zippers. But just again, be careful not to lose your zippers. So now the goal here is to get the zipper tape behind the exterior panel and top stitch it down so that the lining isn't included. So you see my lining is over here. We have the seam taped out of the way. We want to top stitch along the exterior panel here through the vinyl and through the zipper tape. So when you're doing this at the sewing machine, you're going to have to kind of rotate this out of the way as you go. It's a little tricky. Here, I'll be going this way. So I'll start at this end here. And again, <laughs> you're just trying not to lose your zipper pulls as you do this. But I'll just start at this end and just very slowly go inch by inch. Don't worry so much about what's going on over here or what is going on over here when you're working on this. Just go inch by inch, very gently, top stitch along this edge of your exterior panel. All right, now I'm just going to zip up my zipper so I don't feel like I'm going to lose my pulls. We'll have to open this again in a little bit, but for now I'm going to keep it zipped up and your bag is just about ready to be done. So let's set this to the side for just a moment. All right, now take your strap carrier and mark a line going down the midpoint lengthwise. I'm gonna use some of this very sticky leather tape. This is the type of tape you don't really wanna sew over on your machine, especially if it's a domestic machine, but it works really well with vinyl at holding vinyl in place. So if you're using a fabric here that you can iron, you can just press these long raw edges, wrong sides together to meet that midpoint line, or you can just use clips, or you can use tape, whatever works. All right, once you have that folded in, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and just top stitch along each of the folded edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that top stitch, you can just fold the whole unit in half and then grab some scissors and cut it. There you go. Now you can grab your D-rings or rectangle rings or whatever rings you're using and then thread your strap through the straight bottom edge if you're using a D-ring like I am and clip it. And so the wrong side, which has those raw edges, is gonna go wrapped around that bottom edge of your ring so that you only see the nice edge. See, just like that. So now I'm just gonna baste along this bottom edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm also gonna sew right up against the D-ring base. So I don't want my D-ring flopping around like this. See, I want it nice and tight and secure in there. So I'm just gonna stitch on the bottom and then using a zipper foot, I'm gonna stitch as close as I can get to the bottom of the D-ring so it stays nice and firm. I'm gonna do this for both D-rings. These are cute. I love this thread, guys. This variegated thread is fun. Okay, set these to the side for just a moment and let's prep our bag so we can attach them. So the first thing you wanna do is take your lining. So you can see I have my bag with the lining right side up and see our little lining flaps here that we didn't stitch down. We wanna fold those out of the way. We are not sewing those just yet. So you can just take them and fold them right sides together so you don't get tempted to sew them to anything. I know as we get towards the end of the bag, it's like, I just wanna sew it all together. Not yet. Okay, so we clipped our lining ends out of the way. So now we're gonna rotate the unit so that the lining is down. I know, it gets a little disorienting, but you can do this. So the lining is down, we have the exterior wrong side, and we're just gonna flip these little legs. Remember our little legs, we're gonna flip them out of the way. And we have the arms up top here. That's what we have, see? And now we're gonna take one of our strap connectors and we're gonna lay it right side down and center it on our zipper tape and it should just snug right in there in between the tops of your exterior fabric. And just line it up with the edge, clip it in place. Do this for the other side as well. So I'm gonna, hello, flip that out of the way. Take my D-ring, lay it right side down, snug it in between right over that zipper tape and clip it in place. All right, now let's just baste these down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just right along the clipped edge here. Just do your best to keep it all straight and don't sew that lining. That lining should be clipped out of the way. 
All right, there we go. Now we just have to close it up. So you're gonna pull your exterior to one side and your lining panels to the other side, just like this. And if you have any clips holding things in place, you can go ahead and remove those now. Okay, what we're worried about is the bottom edges of our two lining panels. So let's just lay those little legs right sides together and let's clip along this bottom edge and you want to mark about a six inch opening on the center of your lining bottom here, okay? So we're going to sew along this bottom edge at a three eighths inch seam allowance, but we're not going to sew in between our opening. This is how we're going to turn the bag out later. Make sure you backstitch at the ends and also at these marks, okay? Backstitch really well because we're going to be finagling this and turning it and pulling on it. All right, once you have that sewn, if you'd like, you can press the seam back so that it will be easier to close in the end, but I'm just gonna leave it. I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm risky. Okay, so after we have this sewn, what we wanna do now is we wanna join the legs and the arms of the exterior. So again, we're still not working on the lining. If you'd like, you can once again clip it out of the way so it doesn't distract you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these legs up right sides together with our arms. So our arms are up here by the zipper and all we have to do is pull them like that. Now, if you use the right zipper tape, if you did all your seam allowances correctly, these should be the same width, see? This combo of arm, zipper tape, arm, and my little chubby legs down here, these should all be the same width. If they're not exactly the same width, that's okay, but you really want them to be as close as possible to the same width. So clip along that edge. Okay, once you have one side clipped, again, remember, keep the, look at my, my lining, it wants to go over there. It wants to be a part of this. You can't be a part of this lining, you gotta stay out of the way. So we're not sewing the lining, we're just sewing the exterior. So now take this to the sewing machine and sew along the short clipped edge here at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, so now you have one side joined. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side and you're gonna notice it, it doesn't lay flat. You have to pull it over there. Once again, keep that lining out of the way. Line it up, it should be the same width, hopefully. And then just clip together. And let's sew along this edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, there you go. So now you have the arms and the legs of your exterior all joined up. Now we wanna do the same thing for the lining. So you're going to take your lining bottom, which is your legs, and go ahead and press this open. However is easiest, you can just press it with an iron or finger press it. So these are my legs, and I'm going to line them up with my arms. Now, here's the thing. Line up the arms with the outer edges. There's going to be a gap in the middle because you do have that seam pressed. Don't, don't unfold this to try to make it meet in the middle. Don't do that. We want this top edge of our arms here to stay pressed. So you just line them up on the raw edges, on the outer edges, with the legs, just like that. Let me see if I can show you better. So you see there is this gap here between the top edges of the arm. That's okay. We'll close that up, but we, we don't want any raw edges here in the middle. So you want to keep everything folded nice and neat. Okay, so now we're going to go sew along the lining only at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You're going to have to pull that exterior out of the way. We're only sewing the lining right here on this clipped edge. All right, there we go. So you can see on this edge, we have the lining closed up and the exterior closed up just like that. Let's repeat that with the other side. So once again, here, it's easier if I do it this way. So once again, I'm just going to finger press this seam on the lining open so I can get everything nice and flat. Ironing this is obviously going to probably be easier. And then I'm going to take the little short arms and I'm going to pull them right sides together with the legs and line them up on the outer raw edges, keeping that fold on the inner part of my arms in place. So this is where tape was really handy, or if you pressed it really well with your iron, this should help. So now once again, I'm gonna sew along the short clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so now I'm going to close up this hole right here. You see how we have this hole between the exterior, the back of the zipper and the lining? We wanna close that up. She gives you a few different options. This, this one is definitely the easiest. You're going to pull your lining and your exterior, all those little short edges together and line them up nice and neat. 
And what we're going to do is we're not going to sew along the whole edge. We don't want that. We only want to sew right over this space right here. So pretty much just past the edges of your raw edges that are folded over of your seam. So just right there. We don't want to sew. We don't want these together over here. Just right over the zipper coil. So I'm just going to start right at the left side of my seam, go over it, and stop at the other edge of my seam, back stitching each time. There you go. So you see I went through the lining, the zipper, and the exterior, but I can still pull apart my lining and exterior sides, okay? So we're going to do the same thing on the other side, just lining this up, adding some clips to hold it in place nice and straight. And then I'm just sewing right outside of my seam, back stitching at the beginning and the end. Okay, now if you look at this, this is just a boxy bag. You see? These little rectangles here, these are just the rectangles you make in a boxy bag. Isn't that, isn't that wild? I love that. Okay, so before we get started, I'm going to open my zipper just a little bit. Now here's the thing. I don't want to open my zipper pull all the way because what happens is these zipper pulls here, they end up getting in the seam and then I sew over them and it's a mess. So my goal is usually just to open the zipper enough on the inside so that I can reach my hand in and open it more when it's time to turn it. So now I'm going to reach into the exterior corners here and I'm going to pull on these cut corners. So you have these cut corners here, just pull on those. And the lining needs to stay out of this. So see how the lining is trying to tuck it over here by the seams? We need to fold that out of there. We don't want that. So I'm just going to straighten this out. I'm folding my seam the way it wants to go over here. It's going to be folded down. And I'm just going to start clipping along this edge, making my box corners, which ends up being the side of the purse, which is so cool. All right, I'm going to do this for all four of my exterior edges. If you have that little zipper over here for your outer pocket, go ahead and move that into the middle. We don't want to sew over that. Even if it's little, it's still metal. All right, I have all four of my exterior edges boxed. Again, the lining is staying out of here. While I'm sewing, I'm paying close attention to make sure I don't accidentally sew over my lining. We'll deal with the lining in a moment. Now we're going to sew along each of these four edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end each time. There we go. So once again, just make sure your zipper is mostly open. If you haven't already trimmed down your zipper tape here, you can do that. I probably should have done that before I sewed this because they got in the way. That's okay. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing with the lining, but we're gonna do it kind of one at a time. It's a little hard to pull each one of these corners at the same time. You're gonna have to really, actually you can kind of open up your zipper more if it helps. Just make sure you keep those zipper pulls out of the way, but they shouldn't get in there. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pull on the corners of the lining and just flatten it out. That seam is going to go, you know, a third or a quarter of the way down from the top. And it is a tight fit, so you really got to shove the exterior out of the way. And you're just focusing on one edge at a time. All right, so as you can see, I just clipped one edge and I'm going to sew along this edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to do that for the remaining three edges, just clipping at the machine and sewing one edge at a time. Once you have it all sewn, you can trim down your seam allowances if you'd like. Since I'm using a bulkier vinyl, I am going to trim these down in half. All right, now we're just going to turn the whole bag through that hole in the lining. So just gently push it through. Once you have it mostly turned out, just make sure you push out all those corners really well. All right, now I'm just going to tuck in the lining because I want to see what it looks like. It's such a cool way to make this shape of a bag. 
See, I like the double zip because these connectors are pretty tall. So this way it's a little bit easier. But look, look how adorable that is. Isn't that fun? Such a unique and fun way to make a bag that looks like it has curves, right? It looks like it's got these rounded curves, but there's no curves. It's just a boxed bag. So this is a really cool way to do that. I love that. Okay, now let's close up the lining. So let's pull out the bottom of the lining. And if you pressed your seam earlier, this should be very easy to close. Otherwise, all you have to do is put your fingers into the edges and then pull a little bit. And these raw edges should somewhat fold down. If you have to assist it a little bit and fold them down, go ahead and fold them to get all those raw edges inside the bag. I'm really not that picky with how much I fold it down. All right, now I'm gonna go top stitch along this opening to close it at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once that's closed, just put the lining back in the bag. She suggests putting an A5 notebook wrapped in fabric inside of this to really help firm up the shape of the bag. I don't think I have one of those, but if you used vinyl, I mean, the shape is, is just perfect. It's perfect, it's an adorable bag. Okay, I'm gonna set this to the side while we make the crossbody strap. So for this crossbody strap, I'm actually just going to fold it in half, wrong sides together, and call it a day. <laughs> if you're using fabric, your crossbody strap will be wider than mine and you're gonna double fold it. If you're using cork or vinyl, you can just single fold it if you don't mind those raw edges showing on one side. So I'm just folding it long edges together and adding a clip along the fold. Okay, now I'm gonna take this strap to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch along all four edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, to finish up my strap, I am going to just use rivets. So I am using nine millimeter rivets that are eight millimeters tall. I'm gonna take my strap and I'm going to take the wrong side and place the wrong side against the middle bar while I thread the strap up over it and then just wrap it around that middle bar. Now I'm just going to bring this over about an inch and I'm not gonna fold it over. I'm okay with the raw edges because I have the raw edges on the side as well. So now I'm just going to grab my rivet press and punch a hole. And then I'll take one of my rivets and just snap it in place. And I'm gonna take my strap and with the wrong side up, so that's, you know, the fold over here, that side up, I'm going to straighten out my strap, grab my swivel hook and insert my swivel pointing down. So the swivel is on the right side of my strap and just thread it through. And then once again, keeping the strap really straight, I'm going to take the raw edge, slide it up on the right side of my slider, generously pull it through, and then slide it over that middle bar over to the left side of my slider and pull it out just like that. So now I should have my swivel on one side, my slider in the middle, and then my raw edge over here. I'm gonna grab my remaining swivel Insert that so the hook part is on the right side, and then just fold over the strap by about an inch or so. And then I'll just pop a hole in there for my rivet. So I'm gonna grab my other press, and I'm just gonna press down these rivets now. There we go, now I've got my strap all done, so all I have to do is hook it on to my bag. Look how cute that is. I could also add a couple rivets here. I might do that later, we'll see. But you could definitely add at least two more rivets on the strap tabs as well. But look how cute that is. Isn't that an adorable little bag? I love it. Do, 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 do. How cute is it? I love this. This is more of a neutral bag for me. This is about as neutral as I get. I mean, we still have some like holographic rainbow on the sides, on the vinyl, but 
I do love this. This is a beautiful, beautiful bag, a beautiful everyday bag. This is a great gender neutral bag as well. You can make this in all black and all like a faux leather vinyl. It'd be very chic. And I also love how quick this bag comes together. I mean, it really does take just a couple hours to put it all together. If you wanted to make a whole bunch of them, you could definitely prep them all on one day, sew them all on another day. All of your friends can have one. You guys can have matching and coordinating sets. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, if you were taking like a family trip, that would be fun. You could use an embroidery machine or like a Cricut or Silhouette thing or something like that. And you could like put everybody's names on these bags. This is a really good bag for that. I always love when people do that with boxy bags normally because boxy bags are so some kind of simple to make and they can be quick to make once you kind of get the feel for them. And then you just customize them for everybody and then they're just like little gifts for the whole family. I love that. So this would be a fun one to do that with, to make a bunch for a bunch of friends, maybe a bridal party. I have so many ideas, guys. I have so many ideas. I hope you all make them happen because I don't have time to make all my ideas happen. So thank you again so much to Spencer Og for allowing me to film today's tutorial. This is such, I mean, every single one of Spencer Og's patterns. Let's just talk about that for a moment. Every single one of Spencer Og's patterns, as you're working on it, it's like, what? Like the, the pattern is written amazing. I mean, Diane has the best sense of humor and just the best personality out of like anybody. But it all makes sense, but you don't see it. You know, like you don't see it coming together. It's, we've had two other tutorials and I'll link them down below, but you don't see how this is gonna work. And then in the end, you just flip it all out and it's like, what did I make? <laughs> it's so cool. So I hope you guys have so much fun making this. Obviously I had a ton of fun. So thank you so much for sewing me today. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.